Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. And as you can see, I just helped this turtle out. What I did was I stopped my car when it was safe in the road and find a safe place to pull my car over and not interrupt traffic or put myself at risk. Then I went and got the turtle and determined what direction he was going in, and I took him across to that side of the road. Now that's something you can do to help protect turtles. Many of these turtles are killed crossing roads. So today's episode, I have seven tips on what you can do to help protect turtles with an emphasis on the eastern box turtle. So stay tuned for seven ways you can help protect turtles. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. And here's the make this invasive. It's like dog. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes. Terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's... So the turtle I helped cross the road today is the Eastern Box Turtle. And I've done an episode and explained the biology and natural history of this turtle in detail. If you want to learn a lot about it, check out that episode. But just briefly, this turtle was a male. He has red eyes. He has this indention right here in the carapace, which helps him when he climbs on top of a female during mating. And you can see that the base of the shell is flared. So this was a male box turtle. So for my seven tips on helping turtles, tip number one is help get them across the road. And always be sure if you're in a car and you're driving to pull the car over safely, don't stop suddenly pull over where it's safe, look both ways, and when it's safe for you to go out in the road and get that turtle, take them to the other side of the street. Try to determine, this is very important, what side of the street he was trying to go to. So look at that direction, because if you put him back on the wrong side, he's just gonna turn around as soon as you leave and cross back the other way. If you're a little adventurous and you find a snapping turtle, the correct way to move a snapping turtle is to go behind him, where he can't get you with his jaws, hold on to his tail, and slide your hand underneath his plastron. That's the underneath shell. And pick him up with the, your hand like this. Don't pick him up by his tail. You can hurt him if you do that. Use the tail just to hold him in place on your hand, and you can carry him and move him. I have rescue snapping turtle that I kept for a good number of years at Radford High School, and I'm planning to do an episode on that turtle who is now at Radford University and a favorite of many biology students. Tip number two, do not relocate your turtle. Don't think to yourself, this turtle, this is not a good neighborhood for him. I need to take him somewhere and set him free in a giant tract of forest that I know five miles from here. Don't do it. Box turtles and a lot of other turtles have a very territorial range. Sometimes a box turtle lives only in an area about 200 yards by 200 yards. If you displace him, he may spend the rest of his time trying to get back and find that area from which you took him. Also, if you place him in a new environment, he doesn't know where the food, the water sources are, and he's very likely to not survive. So it's very important don't relocate turtles that you find on the road. Simply take them in the direction that you found them. Number three, avoid the temptation to keep the turtle as a pet. In some places it might not be legal and it's generally just not a good idea. If you really wanna have a turtle or a reptile and you're gonna make a commitment to get the environmental conditions exactly right for that turtle to be healthy, you can find turtle rescues or reptile rescue centers that have turtles that are up for adoption. In the state of Virginia, there's Blue Ridge Reptile Rescue, and they may have a turtle there that needs a home. So research your local state and see if you have a reptile rescue center from which you could adopt an animal. Another reason not to bring a turtle home is that if you keep them at home and you don't do a good job providing the necessary food, nutrition, vitamins, and environmental conditions for this organism to be healthy, and you decide to return a diseased organism back in the environment, 
Well, you're doubly hurting the ecosystem because you have a diseased animal now and then you're releasing disease back into the population. So it's never advisable to do that. Number four, if you find an injured turtle, which again is likely to find along the roadside, take him to a licensed wildlife rehabilitator. Again, you'll have to research one in your state or locality. Many times veterinarians are a good place to call as well because they either know of the licensed rehabilitators or they may have an interest in taking care of the animal themselves. I know that we have a local vet that is very interested in reptiles and will take in and treat reptiles. And then if they can be returned to the wild, they give them back to you to release in the precise location that you found them. Helping turtles and other wildlife tip number five keep your cats indoors don't let uh, domestic cats outside they kill so much wildlife and as well as dogs don't let your cats or dogs run free if you take them outside put them on a leash uh, millions of animals are killed every year by dogs and cats that are running loose the sixth thing you can do is learn more <laughs> and if you're watching nature at your door i know you're interested in learning about wildlife but research uh, animals, research turtles in your area, reptiles in your area, and learn more about them. Here in Virginia, we've got a great organization called the Virginia Herpetological Society. And they have a fantastic website that has a lot of FYI kind of stuff and facts and literature and references and photographs and just a so much information about local reptiles and even if you live out of the state of virginia they may cover organisms that are in your state so it's a great website to check out if you want to learn more about reptiles and amphibians number seven for eastern box turtles there's a report a box turtle form that you can fill out which will help our state of the state of virginia to monitor the populations of box turtles you can find the form on the virginia herpetological website i'll put their website and all the other references and some other extra things that might be useful to you for websites on my description attached to this youtube video so check out the description for those websites that i might recommend so I did some preliminary research and looked at a lot of different eastern states and even some western states. And they have box turtle reporting forms online available to you as well. So check your state. Check out the Northeast Partners in Reptiles and Amphibians Conservation site. It's a group that's dedicated to conservation of reptiles and amphibians throughout many of the East Coast states. And that's another rich resource you can go to and find more information about what states do have turtle reporting programs. I'm going to be returning this turtle right now to the exact location where I found him so he can go on about his business. I hope you enjoyed my episode. If you like what I do, please subscribe. Give me a like, and as I tell my viewers all the time, I love interacting with my viewers. I love hearing from you. Leave me a comment, leave me a question, and I'll comment or answer your question back as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. I hope I'll see you at the next episode.